number one. Let's jump in here. We are first kicking things off talking about what is going on over at the WWE. Uh, Vince McMahon is stepping aside as they are looking into allegations of misconduct against him. Now, I really wanted to talk about this because I am newer to the wrestling fandom. It's something I got into in the last few years, but I know Ray is really, really into wrestling as well. No, not as much anymore. We'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Yeah, we'll get into it. Well, basically. McMahon is stepping aside as he's facing um, alleged executive misconduct allegations, and this is being researched. We're not going to get too much into the allegations here because that is not what we do on this show. That is not our job. Uh, despite what we've said about having hard opinions, we are not judge, jury, and executioner on all things like this. We're not in the room. Meanwhile, his daughter, Stephanie McMahon, who was stepping aside for a while to just engage with her own family more, mm. do things of her own time, she is going to be taking over as CEO during this time as the board is investigating everything. So what I really wanted to get into is, is this going to change anything about wrestling, Ray? Are we going to see some different things with the WWE for now? You know, I'm hoping it's for the better. I think there was... The, wrestling is one of those things where you have to really stick it with the... Because the demographic is all over the place. Oh, absolutely. From kids. It's, it's, I actually think it's a really difficult thing to write for and keep people interested. Like, with me, I could go back into it and be in, into it for like a week because of a particular storyline and completely drop it off the next week because that, that storyline's done or I'm not interested anymore. It's a very tough thing to actually keep people watching. Um, Vince McMahon... There was a time in the early 2000s where he was he was putting out a product that everyone was watching. When Stone Cold was there, the writing, I, I was addicted. I was recording that every time it came on, watching it, re-watching it. But that's changed. And I don't know if it has to do with his age or whatever, but he, I, in my opinion, he's been making some of the... Uh, he's been, or at least allowing some of the worst moves I've ever... I thought would never happen. He let go of Bray Wyatt, which was, which he had a character, The Fiend, which I was really digging. Mm -hmm. Let him go probably for money reasons because they had signed a deal. Um, just these superstars that could have, because right now their product is showcasing one or two people like yeah. at the very top. They're really pushing Roman Reigns. But yeah, and... before it used to be, you could pick from the litter mm -hmm. and any of them could be the next one. There were so many guys that I, I liked watching, like, you know, wrestle, guys and girls. Now it's just they give you one person. And if you don't like them, then they leave you lost picking through everybody that's like, you see them as like not even the same level as that top person. They're so low that even if you pick him, you know, they're not going to do yeah. anything like they won't get the mm. title. They won't beat that top guy. I mean, you'll see it's them just, with other it's just very, it's not interesting right now. There's a couple story storylines that I go on YouTube for just to watch a replay of because I think it's funny. I think there's one with Kevin Owens that he's doing right now. Yeah. It's really funny. The Kevin I don't Owens think, podcast yeah. is fantastic. I think I it's love funny. This but uh, other than that, there's nothing. I, I I hope it makes the product better because I think I hate to say it because Vince McMahon has been a part of this for the longest and mm -hmm. he's had his hands in everything for so long. But I think his his age is catching up to him where he's not getting with what the he's not getting with what's going on now or what people like now he's still he's reverting too much to what used to be before and people since people know about everything about wrestling how it's scripted and all mm -hmm. that thing those things they're a lot smarter when watching it now yeah so you really got to change with that and he hasn't he's it's 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 time for a new person to uh, run this thing mm. yeah. i mean he could be there mm -hmm. i mean i would love for him to see that whatever changes, hopefully they're good, can happen without him there. Because mm -hmm. that's what I really think he needs to see. Because every time they fail, I believe he puts it on him and he makes these moves, but these moves aren't helping the product anymore. I agree with you on this. I think we're relying on, on like on so many media platforms right now, right? We're relying on a lot of nostalgia, right? Bring back Stone Cold, having Vince get in the ring himself recently. <laughs> and then we're relying on big names or legacy wrestlers like Roman Reigns, who uh, maybe this isn't a particularly popular opinion. I find very boring. I find Roman Reigns to be a very boring wrestler and they rely heavily on having valets or other wrestlers who are 
playing opposite against him, rising it up and making his storylines more interesting. So I, I'm with you. I would like to see some fresh takes in here. I also want to make it clear. We're just talking about the WWE product right now. Yeah. It's like we're not including all the other because we know there's AEW, another big wrestling mm -hmm. organization. They have their own thing going. We're just talking about Vince McMahon and what he's done for this company and what it is right now. And it's not a good product. I mean, I could drop it tomorrow if I don't find in anything interesting. And one person, that's only me. Mm -hmm. What if there's a ton of people out there that have the same mentality? Yeah. You got to keep this fresh. You got to keep the storylines unique and and somewhat based. I think people like things that seem real now, like seem like if people don't like each other, you want to you want to feel that they don't like each other because that's what gets you to watch the outcome of that rivalry. Now it's all like just like clown goofiness. Like sometimes you need to put that realism there For if sure. you can in a in a scripted product. I mean, that's why I fell in love with Bianca Belair when she did that hair whip on Sasha Banks and actually cut her stomach open. Oh. And I was like, there are stakes here. <laughs> Ladies, y'all are savage. This is wild. Her fight against Becky Lynch was incredible. I mean, the women's league is what's really keeping me focused here. But I'm hoping that it, the, the the golden like thing that comes out of this, the silver lining, if you will, of these allegations, of this shakeup and everything, is that we see the product change, like you're saying. I mean, do you got, can you name your top, your favorite uh, male wrestler, female wrestler right now in WWE? I love Kevin Owens. Yeah, I think Kevin he's great. Owens. I also love Otis. I, I'm with Seth right now. Seth Rollins, oh, no Seth matter Rollins what they give him. Yeah. It he feels it. like he just owns it. Like... This new character gimmick, I was like, man, this is not going to work. And then you, his music starts getting catchy. Mm -hmm. And then he everything he's he does is not annoying anymore. It's actually funny to me. And a female, it's always been Alexa Bliss. And they um, really trashed her yeah. after trying to make her the fiend. It's disappointing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes those heel turns don't work in everything, which is a bummer. But question is, guys, what do you think of this shakeup? Do you think having Vince McMahon step down for now is for the best? Do you think that his daughter... Uh, is the best fit for this role for the interim? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Guys, we want to take just a minute and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Masterclass is offering classes on a wide variety of topics, like all taught by world-class masters at the absolute tops of their field. Each class is broken down out into individual video lessons, usually like around 10 minutes or so long, and members can explore at their own pace. And each class is supported by downloadable materials, lessons, recipes, or more that you can all find at masterclass.com. For example, are you into streaming? Well, you can take the Building Your Streaming class taught by Ninja so you can sharpen up on your streaming skills. Or if you're interested in independent filmmaking, take independent filmmaking from Academy Award winner Spike Lee. You want to get classes on how to direct? How about from Ron Howard? The very first one I personally looked up and got into was Business Leadership by the great Big Papa Iger, Bob Iger himself. And I was absolutely enthralled with it. I love every single minute of this stuff. If any of those apply to you, you need to try Masterclass. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass. And as a John Campy Show viewer, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash campia. Once again, to get 15% off your annual membership, go to masterclass.com slash campia. Oh, I didn't thank you that you watched wrestling, Rob. I'm so, Cal, I was going to tell you a story about when I worked for Vince McMahon, but oh that's my okay. God. No, hold on, that's hold okay. On. No, no, Rob, no, I, no. I want to hear I didn't about know this. this. When John's talked about wrestling in the past, you usually don't chime in. That's why I was. No, I, I don't know story. anything about wrestling. I'm just going to tell you a quick Vince McMahon oh self-serving yes, story. Please, please, please. So, do that. you remember the XFL? Oh yes. Sir. So Vince McMahon was one of the 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 Machiavellian brainchild persons. He was one of the people that started the original XFL, the Extreme Football League. Mm -hmm. I was working for NBC at the time as a predator, a producer editor. Ooh. And I was tasked with the job of doing the XFL cheerleader commercials. And so I did not <laughs> shoot this footage, but I was given the footage and they said, do something with it. So I wrote these spots and cut them together. Nice. And when you do these, you have to do voiceover. So I, so I did my own voiceover. <gasps> And then they approved the spots, and this Vince McMahon's office had to approve these spots, so he personally was approving them. Then we brought in Don LaFontaine, the voice who's no longer yeah. with us. You've heard his voice in a million commercials. In a world. 
Yes, he he voiced. He was the original Inner World guy. He voices the spots. We turn the spots in. I get a call from Vince McMahon Ooh, himself, the man himself, from the huh? man, from the man himself, and he said, "I don't want this voice on these spots. I want the other guy." I go, the other guy. Yeah, the original guy. Who's the original guy? I didn't say it was me. So he goes, I want that guy on the spots. So. Was it you, though? It was me. Right. Oh. The, the voice he wanted was. It was me. It was my That's voice. They so wanted cool, you over man. Fontaine? They wanted me over Don Fontaine. <laughs> so Damn, bro. so okay. I, because I was working there, I couldn't do, because it's a union lot, I couldn't do oh. the voiceover. Yeah. So I had to outsource my own spots. We had to hire a director. And I had to go in, and the director had to direct me voicing my own voice on my own spots, on my own copy. And not only that, I had to join AFTRA. <gasps> and I made tens of thousands of extra dollars because these spots were everywhere. Yeah. And I had to do end tags like KSFO in San Francisco, you know, whatever, yeah. any station. So I had to do all so the entire summer. And by the way, you can see these commercials. Yes, yes, that's what I was They're add. on my YouTube channel. Uh -huh. The XFL I cheerleader commercials. Now, I would get canceled for these commercials today. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know I did not conceive of them. I just inherited the footage that was directed by John Benito. And that is my voice. And thank you, Vince McMahon, because Vince McMahon was, in the summer of 2000, was responsible for me getting paid. Dang. Tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, and you joined after when the getting was good, when it was Man, a yeah. lower price tag to get into the union, too. Oh, and, I'm jealous. And, you know, people have always said I should do voice. I, like, I was going to say. The only voiceover I've ever done. Our, our viewer, Andy's going to lose his mind and go find those. He always wants you to do ASMR, and now uh, he's going to be like, oh, ads from Rob. I'm telling you. It, now, by the way, don't come at me and say how misogynistic they oh, are. Oh, man. I know okay. they're, they're very misogynistic spots. I am still proud of the work I did. Oh, man. I am so glad that we found this out about you. <laughs> yeah, Rob, can you actually point to your wall of Hot Toys and say which ones Vince McMahon paid for? <laughs> <laughs> actually, Hot Toys didn't exist back then. Oh. Back then. The, but the very first Hot Toy I ever bought was the director. It was a bootleg. They hadn't become the Hot Toys that we know and love, but it was of George Lucas. And I oh. still have it. That is awesome. Well, hey, so there's yeah. my Vince McMahon story. I, I Thank you, Mr. McMahon. <laughs> you have been part of Hollywood for so long that you have a story with every single like person <laughs> or medium. It's it's, it's wild to it's me. It's pretty funny. I, I I might be unknown and not financially successful, but I have had a lot of fun. And now Which that I'm the final ar uh, Robiter of all of your fandom, <laughs> oh my God, you're running with that name still. <laughs> Jeez, you're really He's making this get it real, huh? Are you Rob, kidding? The Rob, people on Robert Twitter were coming at me so hard today. I'm just gonna I'm gonna lean into lean it. Lean into it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, oh, if great. we can only hear you thank Star Trek, I hope to be alive when that happens. Oh, that's going to be a great day. Well, <laughs> I, I don't want to say that John will get yeah, mad. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, let's move on. Folks, uh, make sure that you weigh in, though, on this WWE situation. Let us know what you think about Rob's old commercials. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. They're on, on YouTube. Go find them.